Anambra State Assembly Speaker Okafor Lord Governor Saludo on Youth Inclusive Governance. Anambra State Government to reintroduce sanitary inspectors to enhance a clean and healthy environment. Federal Government concludes plans for renewal of port concession agreements within 45 days. Three mountaineers die after fall from Ecuador Carriharizos volcano. Before the news in detail, here is a special message. Governor Chukuma Saludo has called for a total turnaround maintenance of the Anambra state economy and promotion of core Igbo values. Let's give him maximum support for the tax ahead. Good morning. Welcome to the news at 7 on ABS television. My name is Priska Wongwo. As the world marks the International Youth Day yesterday, the Speaker of the State House of Assembly, Right Honorable Uche Okafo, has described youth as an important component of the society at the backbone of every nation. And as good real message to the youth of the state as they join their counterparts in celebrating their day, Right Honorable Okafo enjoined the federal government to map out solid youth empowerment programs to fix the youth into meaningful ventures. The speaker recommended Governor Chukuma Saludo for creating an enabling environment for the youth in the state to showcase their potential and earn a living, assure that the state legislature will continue to enact laws amid resolutions aimed at improving the status of the youth of the state. He expressed satisfaction that Anambra State is leading the nation's campaign on youth inclusiveness and governance, adding that both the State Executive Council and State Legislature have a record of over 80% youth membership, respectively. Right Honorable Okafo, we're urging the youth in the state to show acts capable of the base in their integrity, such as political thuggery, rape and other vices, advise them to uphold those virtues that will guarantee them a brighter future. Anambra State Government says it will reintroduce the services of sanitary inspectors as part of its effort to ensure a clean and healthy environment across the state. The Commissioner for Environment, Mr. Felix Odimigo, disclosed this in a telephone interview with the ABS. According to the Commissioner, when introduced in different parts of the state, the sanitary inspectors recommend a house-to-house -house inspection of facilities to ensure that every compound and all the surroundings are clean for enhanced living standards. Mr. Odimewu, an engineer, who said that the public health law of 2016 will be fully domesticated in Anambra State, charging the Anambra and residents of the state to always keep their surroundings clean to avoid contacting diseases. He urged them to always open the drainages in front of their houses and offices for easy flow of flood water. The Commissioner for Environment reminded the people of the need to always beautify the environment, cautioned them against indiscriminate dumping of refuse, which noted the faces the environment. Mr. Odimewu urged the people to support the efforts of the present government in Anambra State towards environmental cleanliness by being environment friendly. The State Emergency Management Agency, SEMA, has organized a one-day sensitization meeting for flood-prone communities in Anambra. The early warning interactive section held at Atani, Obaru local government area, was in collaboration with local emergency management committee and was aimed at enlightening and educating the public on proactive measures to be taken against risks and dangers associated with flood disaster. Odinaka Mulisa takes the story from here. Obaru Council area has remained one of the most vulnerable flood-prone communities in the state with persistent issue of flooding over the years. Interacting with stakeholders, resident generals and community leaders, the state coordinator, local emergency management committee, Honorable Nam the s observed that the early warning alarm had become imperative to expose participants on the adverse effects of flooding in communities and precautionary measures to curb the hardship and economic losses. According to him, the huge investment of the state government on urban renewal projects and health sector will go down the drain if there is no collaborative effort with stakeholders in the state. He, among others, cautioned against man-made disaster, lamenting that flooding has mostly retarded academic calendar in the area, reminding community leaders to complement government efforts by encouraging proper waste disposal. <laughs> Okay, I call one do but I 
ife gbasara iji na mmiri so na ozi ai kporo ndo obodo nda ai kporo ku abu the pgs the women leaders the uh, youth leaders and the rest of them and the stakeholders in the communities ke nwi ke bulo ozi akowa ru ndo obodo mpo ode na iga na edebe ba ibi ocha na iga na ewopu mmiri ni ide mmiri na nke kacha nke na iluchu uno Contributing the President General of Umozo Community, Mr. Cyril Ezekwere, advocated for dredging and piling of River Niger to check met flooding in the area. A court section of participants in their suggestions identified inauguration of sanitation committee in various communities as progressive measures in assisting the government. From Atani Obaru Council Headquarters, Odinaka Mulisa reporting. The Metropolitan Archbishop of Onitsha, the Most Reverend Valerian Okeke, says student nurses at College of Nursing Sciences, St. Charles Borromeo Specialist Hospital, Onitsha, are given holistic education in order to stand out in the society. Staff reporter Ogachugu Orano takes the story from here. Archbishop Okeke, who stated this during the matriculation and capping ceremony of set 2021 at the college premises, charged them to maintain the culture of excellence they are known for and thank the management and staff of the college for the efforts which made the student nurses to score 100% in their final professional qualifying examination. The Chancellor of Catholic Archdiocese of Furniture, very Reverend Father Prudent Tusaro, who represented Archbishop Okeke at the ceremony, in a homely which ushered in the matriculation, spoke on the fundamental messages of Feast of Transfiguration of Jesus Christ, which considered with the college event, urged Christians to relate with God through prayer. Before Jesus died on the cross in John chapter 19, verse 30, it is finished. finished. So, I'm so putting when I Jesus Christ, with an angel, it's God. If I have a the hour here through the channel of the celebration, I mean, amen. The manager of St. Charles Borromeo College of Nursing Sciences, Reverend Father Fidelis Wanze, who records the challenges and successes recorded on the school, thanked Archbishop Okeke for his huge support to the college and for attracting humanitarians from Hungary who are constructing a five-story building for male hostel and administrative blocks, soliciting for more support for the project. <laughs> Yanakwaze Nafa is in Nanyanoa College of Nursing Sciences, St. Charles Borromeo Specialist Hospital, Onisha. Well, we are now Bata, His Grace, Most Reverend Valerian Maduko KK. In an address of welcome, the Provost of the College, Dr. Henrietta Okedo, announced that the National Midwifery Council of Nigeria has approved the intake of 100 students in the college as against the initial 50 because of the fiscal structure, available human resources and the performance of the students. The class representative of SET 2021, Stella Mose, who thanked Archbishop Okeke for his foresight and vision for the college, also commended Governor Tukuma Soludo for ensuring that Anambra State meets the standard of academics worldwide, appealing for a school bus, notebook computers, and funds for the ongoing project in their college. To the humanitarians from Hungary, whose kind gesture has extended to this noble institution, we say thank you for the massive building work going on in our college especially our male hostel project. We appreciate you. A cross-section of students also bet their minds on the journey so far. The event attracted personalities from the health sector, including Director of Nursing Services, Enambra State, Mrs. Perpetua Anene, Mr. Celestine Mweke, who was the chairman on the occasion, Coordinator of Health Services of Onitsha Archdiocese, Very Reverend Father Basil Ekunife, Chief Executive Officer, St. Charles Borromeo Specialist Hospital, Reverend Father Izunna Okonkwo, Head of Department, Nursing Sciences, UNISIC, Associate Professor Clementina Wankwo, former Anambra State Head of Service, Mr. Harry Udu, among others. Tapping of the matriculants, nurses' pledge, recognition of best brains, cultural dance, among others, featured during the event. Ogotuku Orano for ABS News. The Southeast Executive Members of the Radio, Television, Theater and Art Workers Union, Ratao, has appreciated Governor Chukuma Saludo for appointing their own Sachido Obidiogo as the Managing Director of Anambra Broadcasting Service, ABS. 
The association expresses appreciation during the cuts of call as Achido in his office. In Oka, correspondent Blessing Uchendo reports. Ms. Remark, the Vice President of Ratau Southeast Zone, Prince Emeka Kalo, who led the delegation while thanking Governor Soludo for considering Sachido competent and worthy of the position, expressed optimism that he would deliver as he has over the years proven his mettle in the industry. Prince Kalo further noted that the essence of the visit was to introduce newly elected executives from the national, state and chapels for familiarization even as they play their full support and cooperation to the betterment of the organization and union. In Anambra State, from the State Council to all the chapters, schools were newly elected. They were just elected, they were elected just before you came on board. So we said, we felt we should come and introduce them to you so you know the people you relate with. If they come to you and say they are our members, today you we are the people that supervise their election. State Council supervises chapter. Uh, national supervise the state. So I have come to introduce them to you. When we leave here, the next one will be Enugu State. We will go and do that of Enugu. That's why Enugu people have come. We will go, we'll go do their one and introduce them to the people there. So it's very simple to come and say congratulations to your house, to your home. Because this is where you belong, by virtue of having anchored everything Ratau have done. Responding, the ABS boss, Sachido, thanked the union for identifying with him and assured that he would not disappoint. He reminded them that the present administration is committed to transforming Anambra State into a prosperous and livable state and advised them to continue to work as a team. According to him, unionism promotes human capacity for effective delivery. You know, we have a governor who believes so much in professionalism. He has a tall dream. You know, we keep talking about this is dream. He's I mean, gradually achieving the dream of building a livable, prosperous, uh, secure, clean, and green homeland. Members of the board management of ABS, they are present. And uh, providentially, the members of the, is it the board of uh, Ratawu? Ladies and gentlemen, I, I am actually delighted to have you here. Also continue to seek your mentorship. On ground to receive the delegation was the management of the establishment while the National Woman Leader of Ratawu, Comrade Viola Ibe, National Officer Southeast, Comrade Ifa in Sunday, and the State Chairman of Ratao, Mrs. Marin Stone Enujoke, among others, were among the delegation in Oka Blessing Uchendo, ABS News. The federal government has said that it has concluded plans for the renewal of the port's concession agreement within the next 45 days. The Minister of Transportation, Moazu Sambo, said while on an inspection tour at a Papa and Tinkan port, Sambo explained that all necessary factors had been factored into the new agreement, which is expected to correct the shortcomings of the forced concession agreements. The Minister commended the efforts of the terminal operators in transforming port operations over the years. He appreciated the massive job opportunities availed Nigerians at the terminals. Recall that a review of terminal operators' concession agreement has been ongoing for more than three years, with several terminals operating with expired concession agreements. However, the minister maintained that automation was the only way to drive efficiency at the nation's seaport. He encouraged Nigerian Port Authority to intensify efforts geared towards automated processes. The Transition Committee Chairman for Onitsha South Area Council, Mr. Mecca Oji, has pledged his commitment to deliver on the mandate of restoring the area of its lost glory. Mr. Oji stated this at a sensitization exercise and demolition of illegal structures within the markets in the area. Odina Kamulisa has the details. The sensitization exercise took him and the team around Portacourt Road, Obo Road, Bridgehead Market, Allied Tools Market, Obo City Market, and other areas. 
while inspecting some of the buildings constructed along drainage channel. The chairman gave the traders 14 days to two weeks deadline to evacuate the drainage and remove wells displayed on top of the drainage channels to enhance free flow of flood. According to him, the exercise had become necessary in line with Governor Soludo's urban renewal initiative for a livable and prosperous homeland and announced that his administration targets service delivery impact with the vision of addressing infrastructural problems in the area. He revealed that plans for the establishment of fire service station, health facility across all the markets in Onitsha South, as well as provision of ultra-modern playground for recreational activities for the citizenry. Among the areas visited in his familiarization exercise, we are Live Breville's PLC, where he cautioned against land encroachment beyond government approved boundary. At most of the areas penciled for demolition, Honorable OG gave a matching order, issuing 14 days automatum to close down the places, failure to comply to the two weeks directive. Similarly, at the Bridgehead Markets, Honorable OG pleaded with the chairman of the market, Mr. Chuku Netan Dubisi, to assist him on the issue of environmental sanitation of the market. Our plan just started. We've talked around all the whole market, the whole road, all the encroachment, the whole infrastructure, illegal structures, and um, some of them we give them uh, few, uh, 14 days notice, some one more notice. So we are serious about it. Uh, our governor is absolutely serious about it. You can see when you go back and play and to revise what we went through, what we saw, a number of people will see it. And by the time we come back, something different will start. Three mountaineers died and health were injured after they fell while climbing Ecuador's Carajarazas Volcano Rescue Services said. The 12 injured, aged between 39 and 58, were transferred to hospitals in the towns of Rayabamba and Ambato. The climbers were attempting to submit the central Alden volcano when they fell 60 meters. Kari Hairazo, a 5,018-meter colossus in Tungaraha province, neighbors Chimborazo volcano, the highest peak in the country, at over 6,200 meters. The recovery of the bodies of those who died, all Ecuadorians, will continue. Sports. A FIFA has moved the start of the upcoming World Cup in Qatar forward by one day to allow the host nation to play at an opening ceremony on Sunday, November 20th. The football governing body confirmed the decision, saying that it followed an assessment of the competition and operational implications and consultations with stakeholders and the host nation. The opening game was said to be an encounter between Senegal and the Netherlands on November 21. After the decision, the match was moved to six hours later, taking the evening sports previously allocated to Qatar versus Ecuador. The opening ceremony in first game will take place at a 60,000 seat Al Bayad Stadium in Alcor, north of the Qatari capital, Doha. The 2022 World Cup is also the first in the tournament's 92 year old history to be played in November and December. The previous 21 editions were all played between late May and the end of July. The tournament's final will take place on December 18, Qatar's National Day. Remember, you can follow the news and program on ABS in many parts of the world by liking our Facebook page at ABS Radio Television. Subscribe to our YouTube page at ABS Television or carry follow us on Instagram at ABS Radio TV. Log on to our website, it's www.absradiotv.com. To end the news this morning, a quick recap of the main points. Anambra State Assembly Speaker Okafo has lauded Governor Saludo on youth inclusive governance. Anambra State Government is set to reintroduce sanitary inspectors to enhance clean and healthy environments. The federal government has concluded plans for renewal of port concession agreements within 45 days. Three mountaineers have died for after four from Ecuador's Carrijo Razo volcano. 
Here is the special message. Governor Chukuma Saludo has come for a to turn around the maintenance of the Anambra State economy and promotion of coable values. Let's give him maximum support for the tax ahead. And that is it on the news at 7 right here on ABS Television. At this time, thanks for watching. My name is Priska Wanko.